Hi, welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I am excited to share a fold with you today that is something new. I actually created it by accident. I was trying to create a different type of card and then this was birthed out of it. I'm calling it the Gift Card Fun Fold. Here's the card we're gonna be creating together today. I also have another card with the same fold that I'm gonna be sharing with you as well. But the way it works is the actual gift card fits on the outside and then the card opens up to the inside. So it's kind of a trifold in an accordion fashion. I'm gonna give you lots of tips along the way as well as coloring tips for this image. If you are here visiting from YouTube, I would love to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below and while you're there, click that small bell icon so that you'll get notifications of when I'm live as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's fun fold card. Here's a good close-up of the card we're gonna be creating together today. I use this one as a wedding card to hold a gift card. The pocket is here on the outside and I've got lots of tips for you about this project. I know it's gonna be difficult to see the scoring in the video, so I decided to make a template for you. You're gonna cut your cardstock base five and a half by 11, and you're gonna score it at one and a quarter, four, and six and three quarters. And then basically what you're going to do is create an accordion fold. I've already scored my crumb cake cardstock here and I'm gonna go ahead and use my bone folder for those nice crisp edges. This one is going to come up because this is gonna hold the gift card on the outside. So it's gonna to come towards you, what we call a valley fold. And then this one is going to go back and this one's going to go forward. So you can kind of see that W formation here. I'm gonna go over all those folds with my bone folder because I wanna make sure that they're nice and strong. The next step is we're gonna adhere some paper. I'm using the Woven Threads Designer Series paper on this card and I've used one of the solid patterns for this area here. Almost all the Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers are double-sided which gives you a lot of options to use them. One side is actually themed and the other side is more generic which gives you a lot of opportunities to use them on all types of occasion cards. I'm going to use my silicone craft sheet that'll help keep my work surface nice and sticky free. Adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it. That's going to make putting adhesive on these small little areas nice and easy and I don't have to worry about it marring my work surface. I'm going to come back over to here and I find going horizontally is a lot easier for me and I'm looking to keep a small margin of color all the way around and then when I'm happy with that I'll press that in place. From that same suite of designer series paper I chose another pattern and since the papers coordinate so beautifully you can mix and match. This one's going to go inside of here and again just like that other pattern it is double-sided I'll add adhesive on these areas here and now that's going to go inside this next panel the back panel here is where I'm going to put some thick whisper white cardstock but before I go ahead and adhere it I'm going to do some stamping I'm using a scrap piece of thick whisper white cardstock because I'm going to be using the alcohol based Stampin' Blends markers and because I'm using the blends markers and they're alcohol based I'm going to want to make sure that I use a water based ink pad so that my colors don't bleed or run. I'm going to be using the cake image from the piece of cake stamp set. I'm absolutely loving this. Lots of different cake images and lots of different greetings for both the inside and the outside of your cards. In addition to that, there's a coordinating cake builder punch that you can purchase to coordinate with these images. And we'll be using both of these today. I'm gonna to go ahead and ink that up with the Memento ink pad. And I'm gonna stamp that here at the bottom. I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna use the other side of this paper for the cake image. And I've pulled out the cake with the flowers on it from inside that same stamp set. We're gonna ink that up as well. And that's gonna go here at the bottom. I'm going to work on the cake base first. I'm going to start with the cake base first. Since there is no Stampin' Blends color for this color paper, which is terracotta tile, a beautiful match is the Cajun craze. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the lightest of the two shades. They are sold individually for $4.50, or you can buy them as a pair in the combo for $9. There is no price difference because it allows you to replace one before the other. And I love that if you use one shade more often than the other one. I like to use the lightest shade first. And since this is a very detailed image, I'm going to use the chisel tip of my Stampin' Blends marker. This end here with the thicker tip indicates the brush. I'm going to go ahead and just color this in just like I would if it was a marker. Once that's colored in, I'm going to switch over to the dark shade. Now I'm going to add a little bit of dark highlights. Once I have my color laid, I'm going to go back over it with my light shade to blend these lines together. Coming back to the light Stampin' Blends marker now, I'm going to go back over this area. 
When you're using the alcohol-based markers, it's really important that you protect your work surface. Even though we're using the thick Whisper White cardstock, there is going to be some bleeding. That's completely normal. Now, while we have the Stampin' Blends out, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the rose color to inside the stem here. And I'm going to use the Light Rococo Rose, which is a brand new in color this year, down here inside that base. And that's going to coordinate nicely with the colors that are inside the Designer Series paper. I'm going to turn this around, and while I have the Stampin' Blends out, I'm going to go ahead and add the details in this flower as well. I'm going to be using the same Cajun Craze marker for my larger daisy-type flowers. I'm going to be doing very little blending because this is a very detailed area. I'll take the darker shade and I'll add just a little bit of accents here towards the center. Again, because this is such a small area, blending is really not necessary. I'll do the same now with the Rococo Rose color, and I'm going to work those inside the roses. Just like before, I'm going to add a little bit of dark accents. And then finally for the leaves, I'll use the Light Mint Macaroon for the lightest color, and then I'll add a little bit of accents with the darker shade. I'm going to come back in with the Light Rococo Rose, and here along the edges of my cake where the icing is supposed to be, I'm going to add some small details of that pink to bring out some of the lighter shades in this Designer Series paper. Now I'm going to use my Cake Builder Punch to punch out those pieces. Let's work with the cake stand first. I'm going to line that up, and then once I have it where I want it, I'll just punch that out. I'm going to flip this over now, and I'm going to do the exact same thing for our cake image. I'm going to push those aside for right now. I'm going to bring back in that larger piece of thick Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to lay out my cake pieces because I'm actually going to stamp a cake topper for this. I'm going to need to move that all the way over to the side because I know that I have those other panels that are going to come up against it. And with a pencil, I'm going to make a small mark of where the top of that cake is going to land so that I know exactly where to stamp the topper itself. I'm coming back over to the Memento ink, and I've got the small flower arrangement from that same stamp set that's going to allow me to stamp the topper. And since I have my markers out, I'm going to go ahead and add some color. You can see that the pencil mark isn't even noticeable at this point. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to a layer of the terracotta tile paper. This is just a 1 8 inch margin of difference. Got my silicone craft sheet here once again, and I'll add adhesive along the outside edges. This now will get mounted here with a very small margin of color all the way around. This piece is going to get mounted on the inside, so once again, we'll add our adhesive, and that's going to go here. Now that that's in place, we can go ahead and assemble our cake stand. I'm going to flip my cake stand over, and I'm going to be using my small mini dimensionals. These are already pre cut and easy to use. I'm going to use my Take Your Pick pickup tool with the paper piercing attachment to help me lift these. I'm going to place one here and one here. I'm going to get a little fussy and I'm going to cut small edges here on the side just so I can balance out the other edges of my cake stand. So I've got one small piece here and I'll add the other piece to this side. That's just going to help balance it, especially because it's going to be mailed and then we'll remove those paper backings. My cake stand now is going to go down here in the very lower right area of my card. I'm going to use my full size dimensionals for the back of my cake and I'll mount those here. This is one reason I love that silicone craft sheet that's holding my dimensionals in place without it marring that work surface. I'm going to start here at the top. I want to make sure this is all going to fit. So I'd rather work a little bit backwards and add my cake stand next. And then this piece is going to come up underneath here and I'll tack that in place. The next thing I want to do is I want to stamp the Mr. and Mrs. But you can see that there's a very small margin here. So I'm going to keep my card closed while I do that. I'm going back to my Memento ink and I've pulled out the greeting from that same stamp set. I'll go ahead and I'll ink that up as well. I can come back in now and just erase that pencil mark and the card itself is finished. We are going to add a couple accessories. The first is the gorgeous flower faceted gems. And again, I'm going to use my Take Your Pick pickup tool. And you're going to see they already have glue dots on the back of them. And I'm going to add that here to the center flower just to give this card a little bit of texture and a little bit of bling. And then I'm going to come over here now and work on the pocket for the gift card. And we're going to use glue dots. Now we want to make sure that the glue dots are right here along the edges. 
so that we don't impede the space for the gift card itself. So I've got my glue dots here and I'm gonna take one of them and I'm gonna press them right here in the corner. And I'll take one other and I'll do the same thing in the other corner. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this and seal that pocket shut. I've got my gift card here and that's gonna slide right down inside. And then to finish it off, I chose the white polka dot tool ribbon, which I absolutely love. And that's gonna come up underneath this layer and you can either make a bow or a knot. I made a bow on my first card, so let's go ahead and do a knot on this one just so you can see some variation. And then once that's in place, I'll come back in with my scissors and just give that ribbon a trim. And there you have it. Here is our gift card fun fold. Isn't this sharp? Now I promised you another card. This one uses the exact same stamp set just a different color palette. And this one is a birthday card, so it gives you another reason to use a gift card. And I change up the theme using that exact same stamp set called Piece of Cake. You'll find this stamp set along with the Cake Builder in the Stampin' Up! Annual Catalog. Now, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you're interested in receiving a complimentary copy of the catalog, I'd be more than happy to send it to you. Just head over to lisasstampstudio.com, click on Contact Me and provide me with your full name and mailing address. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It makes them and I both very happy. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.